Stay tuned because in the rest of the video, um, close grouping of GRI gives you a better chance of performing well, in my opinion. If the majority of units at the place, you know, have a close grouping of GRI, you can probably bet yourself that you're going to be in that 55 to, to 66 thousand dollar gross rental income range if all the units at that resort are producing and performing that well. Now Dunes Village is the one I could not wait to share with you guys. And then finally your highest gross rental income was $90,443. Giving you an average gross rental income of $82,050. Guys, this place is on fire in my opinion compared to all of the ocean, all of the other oceanfront condo resort now again it's it's got middle of the road variance but it does have the highest gri upside so yes you know you've got a twenty thousand dollar variance there you know the the worst that could happen based on the historical data is you know you bring in sixty nine thousand five hundred which is more than a lot of these other units now myrtle beach oceanfront condos can be a very lucrative investment you hop on air dna you can look up rufia who's with one of her four bedroom uh, oceanfront condos, bringing in over $207,000 in gross rental income a year. Guys, it can be very lucrative. Just like we spoke with Matt Freeze. He has eight units and he's making between 15 and $30,000 in profit on each of those eight units. That's on average over $180,000 a year in profit just on is eight oceanfront condo units. So yes, it can be very lucrative. However, as a first time investor, you could have fear of the unknown stopping you and holding you back. You could be having anxiety over making a financial commitment that large, especially if it's your first time. You could be, you know, experiencing procrastination due to the fact that there's not a lot of detailed information out there on the market. Well, our channel, Shorewise Wealth, aims to fix that for you. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about Myrtle Beach Oceanfront Condo Resort variants. We're going to examine some of the gross rental income numbers on a few of my top picks right here in the Myrtle Beach market. Now we're going to examine two bedroom oceanfront condo units that are oceanfront at several different resorts. We're going to look at the Sand Dunes, we're going to look at the Ocean Reef, we're going to look at Dunes Village, which I cannot wait for you to find out about Dunes Village. You're going to get pretty excited when you find out that a unit brought in over $90,000 in gross rental income in 2022. We're also going to look at uh, the Grand Atlantic. And then finally, we're going to look at the Caribbean Resort. We're going to hop on the computer, look at a spreadsheet I built, and we're going to go through the different gross rental incomes. Now, the reason why this information is advantageous is you know, it's going to reveal to you, obviously, the profitability, the potential profitability of these units, but it's also going to let you know how their amenities and their locations compare, all reflected in that GRI number. All in all, what we're discussing here is demand. And we find out the demand from the GRI, the gross rental income number. Generally, higher gross rental income is going to equate in higher demand. Higher demand, of course, is going to equate to higher profitability. All of that information, the location of the resort in comparison to attractions, uh, how updated the unit is, how updated the, the you know, uh, resort is itself. You know, was it built in 2007 or was it built in 1985? I mean, all of this kind of information is going to be found and reflected in that gross rental income number which is ultimately going to reveal your profitability. Now, the goal here is to save you time. I advise my clients to not start comparing, you know, all the different amenities from this resort to this one. Don't compare all the, you know, the attractions and their distance away from the resort because all of that information is found and reflected in the gross rental income. Ultimately, people are going to rent the units that are the most desirable, that they have, that there's the most demand for generally. So you can save yourself a lot of time by not, you know, looking up and map questing and Google mapping, you know, where this one is in reference to 
that and you know where is Broadway at the beach in reference to this one and where is Barefoot in reference to to, to this oceanfront condo so you can save yourself a lot of time by simply comparing GRI. Look at what's coming up next. Now for investors that might be a little bit more uh, hungry, you know, you 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 know you have you've got a, a, a substantial amount of capital to invest, and you'd really like to you know make a 20-year, maybe 30-year target, maybe 50-year target out of you know Myrtle Beach oceanfront condo investing, and you want to find a niche market. You know your market trends can reveal which resorts do better as a result of those concerts for example right currently this this upcoming weekend we have in town the country music festival it draws some of the top names in country music i mean this place is going to be nuts there's going to be an extra forty thousand people in town now certainly there is a time when the type of, of amenities or the attractions that are nearby are going to be advantageous and you want to know. For example, let's say you plan on using this unit for a for personal use. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be here two or three times a year with your family and you want to make sure that this location meets your certain lifestyle preferences. Well obviously at that point you need to make sure it checks your personal boxes. But as far as rental demand goes, you can find out if this unit's doing well simply by looking at and comparing GRI, the gross rental income on the unit now for investors that might be a little bit more uh hungry you know you 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 know you have you've got a, a, a substantial amount of capital to invest and you'd really like to you know make a 20 year maybe 30 year target maybe 50 year target out of you know myrtle beach oceanfront condo investing and you want to find a niche market you want to particularly go after golfers for example and you want to get and maximize the most rentals that you can get with golfers. Well, then you're gonna make sure that the resort that you pick is gonna be near those top golf courses in our market. Now, why would somebody want to do that? Well, let's just take it a step further. Well, let's say that you wanted to invade the Myrtle Beach oceanfront condo market, and you wanted to strategically work at dominating this market. Let's say that you have millions of dollars to spend, and you'd like to know, you know, the, what's the strategy? What's the best way to go about doing that? You know, how do I really come in and put out all of my competitors? Well, in that case, you know, you'd go after a niche market, let's say golfers. It, it could be an excellent place to start. And then you would work on taking over and designing all of your units around and purchasing units in locations that are advantageous for golfers. And then once you controlled, you know, a certain percentage of that market, let's just say 50 to 70%, which would be substantial, you'd have to have millions of dollars to do this. Then you'd move on to another niche market. And then kind of step by step, line upon line, you could eventually work towards dominating the Myrtle Beach oceanfront condo rental market. Now your typical investor that's going to be investing, let's just say, you know, over the course of 10 or 15 years, maybe even 20 years, but they don't have millions of dollars to spend, then that kind of strategy and that kind of thinking is not gonna be important for you. So for your average investor, your typical investor, in my opinion, one of the most important things that you need to be focused on and concerned about is the gross rental income because in that number is gonna have your demand and ultimately your profitability. Another reason why variance is important to track is it, it reveals market trends. It's gonna show you the popularity of certain resorts over other resorts. This is very useful information, especially when you're a first time investor. And it's particularly useful to see this information side by side. So upcoming in this video, I'm gonna put a, a spreadsheet on the screen and we're gonna talk through and you're gonna look at the information side by side. It becomes pretty clear where a smart move is for you. And it gives us a lot of information that's really insightful. So stay tuned. Now guys, just one last topic here on market trends. We have lots of events that take place here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So, you know, your market trends can reveal which resorts do better as a result of those concerts, for example. Right currently, this, this upcoming weekend, we have in town the Country Music Festival. It draws some of the top names in country music. I mean, this place is gonna be nuts. There's gonna be an extra 40,000 people in town due to that. Now, do you think that if you happen to own an oceanfront condo at the Caribbean Resort, 
which happens to be walking distance from the Country Music Festival, that that property is going to be rented? And do you think that you're going to get a significant boost, most likely, in your rental income because of that? Exactly. So knowing and tracking variance is going to let you know which resorts outperform other resorts so that you know what unit to purchase, especially as a first-time investor. Now, something else I want you to take into account, guys, is that lower GRI can also indicate investment risk. When we're gonna be looking at these oceanfront condo re resort rental incomes side by side, please take into account that, you know, if you've got units that have an average GRI of $48,000, but then you have other units that have an average GRI of $82,000, well, the lower GRIs could indicate that they have higher vacancies. It really could show that they are not performing very, very well and that there's a lack of demand. So for me personally, I'm gonna put my money in a resort that has a much higher average gross rental income across the board than I would in a resort that has a lower average gross rental income. And I'm mainly going to do that so that I reduce or lower my investment risk. Now the idea here is to give you the best potential shot at turning a profit, especially starting out the gate, especially as a first time investor. That's why we put you in two bedroom units. That, or at least I advise you to buy a two bedroom unit if at all possible. Two bedroom, direct ocean front, because that's gonna appeal to the widest audience. It's gonna give you pretty much double the gross rental income that a one bedroom is gonna give you. And it's gonna have similar, if not close to the same expenses as a one bedroom. So you might as well buy a two bedroom. It's a great place to start. And it's why I ran your numbers in this video based on two bedroom units at all these different resorts. I believe you should invest in oceanfront condos in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, because this is the fastest growing area out of the 150 most populated areas in the entire United States for the last three years in a row, according to US News and World Report. This helps to insulate our market from many of the ups and downs that the rest of our nation's real estate market experiences. This can help you have a more stable rental property. I believe you should invest in oceanfront condos in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, because they have a tremendous upside when compared to money market accounts and the stock market due to the appreciation they earn and the potential of higher annual yields through their gross rental income when compared to these other investments. Money market accounts and the stock market don't have the upside of added appreciation. I believe you should invest in oceanfront condos in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, because while our prices have risen and have held their value, we're also much cheaper than other places like Florida. Where else can you go and find an oceanfront condo for as little as $100,000? If you're getting into the real estate game or expanding your current portfolio, the bang for your buck is sitting right on the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina oceanfront. Stay tuned because in the rest of the video, then finally the winner in my opinion is going to be Dunes Village having a whopping average gross rental income of $82,050. Now just to quickly recap guys, we're going to talk through very quickly the importance of GRI which is gross rental income variance. The first thing it's going to do for you, it's going to help you make an informed decision in my opinion. When you can side by side compare the variance at different resorts, it's going to make some, some information, some insights pretty clear to see. So that way you give your investment and you make a savvy investment decision, you give your investment the best possible odds at winning and turning a profit right out the gate as a first time investor. Now the GRI variance data is also going to help you with financial planning. It's going to have you help have you make a more solid estimate when you're forecasting and budgeting, in my opinion. It's also going to help reveal to you the potential upside that your unit can have, the highest rental income, for example, at that resort for a two bedroom, and the low side, you know, on the worst case things, you know, how how did the worst unit perform at that particular oceanfront condo resort? Now this information is very, very helpful and can actually lead you to help understand that oceanfront condo rentals are very much like a business. 
it depends on who's running the show as to how well that oceanfront condo does. Now that's just one particular insight which we'll dive into a little bit later on in the video. And again, finally, it's gonna give you risk mitigation. When you see how the Dunes Village performs, in my opinion, side by side with the other four oceanfront condo resorts, it's gonna become very clear where you should put your money. All right, let's dive into this spreadsheet, guys. Now, some of the key questions that, that are answered by the GRI data, as you can see on the screen, what is the average rental income for two bedroom units at different Myrtle Beach oceanfront condo resorts? As you'll notice, Ocean Reef had our lowest average gross rental income at $48,686. The Grand Atlantic was next with $49,019. Sand Dunes came in again following the Grand Atlantic at $50,180. And then also the Caribbean Resort makes it into a tier of its own at $61,899. And then finally, the winner, in my opinion, is going to be Dunes Village, having a whopping average gross rental income of $82,050. Now, which resorts offer the highest and the lowest gross rental income? Now, hands down, highest gross rental income is going to go to Dunes Village. As you can see there, in 2022, they had a unit that brought in $90,443. That is crushing all of the rest, guys. Now, for your lowest gross rental income, we have a unit there at the Ocean Reef Resort it brought in $27,756. Now, the difference or what, what these two different numbers reveal to us, plain and simply, it shows risk potential. Obviously, if you're gonna be investing at the Ocean Reef, there's a historical data that shows an owner brought in only $27,000, give or take. Now, this also could reveal to us the lack of experience of that owner which we're gonna dive into just a little bit later. Now we're gonna go through these resort by resort quickly. You'll notice the Sand Dunes Resort, all this information is from 2022. You have four different units there. The average active price of a unit is 338,000. Now you have a low of 33,660 for gross rental income, and you have a high of as much as 66,551. Now that's a range of $32,891. Guys, there's a lot of risk potential. There's a lot that could happen there at the Sand Dunes Resort based on the 2022 historical data. Now we can compare that range and the range is simply the highest gross rental income minus the lowest gross rental income. We can take that number and we can compare the different oceanfront resorts and find the resorts that have a low range, that way we're more likely to have a consistent gross rental income, in my opinion. Now, the Sand Dunes was built back in 1985. You can see here that there's lots of variance in the GRI um, that could be due to unit owners. You know, for example, it, it obviously it could be due to a lack of experienced owners, but I will tell you this, Matt Freeze, as you'll see in our other interview videos with him, he has a friend that owns here at the Sand Dunes Resort. This guy, his very first year doing Airbnb alone, brought in over $63,000 in gross rental income for a three bedroom, two bathroom, ocean view unit right there at the Sand Dunes Resort. Now, in my opinion, he was under Matt's leadership and guidance, which is what caused him to excel. And I believe that he did very well for a first time investor, first year doing it all by himself. So now there are other units there that you can see, they brought in 33,000, give or take. Obviously they didn't have somebody coaching them and helping them, I mean, in my opinion, somebody like Matt, or, or, or they weren't plugged into a solid source like the Shorewise Wealth Channel, that's gonna give them excellent information on how to manage and run and operate that unit so that they're making an informed decision. As you're gonna find out across a lot of this data, there's variance. And it's gonna boil down to the fact that two different people are gonna make two very different decisions. One person's gonna be very calculated and very informed, very studied, and the other person is not. 
and it's gonna show in their gross rental income. Now I'm about to give you a piece of information that you might not necessarily like so much, but I do believe it's helpful and it's honest and it works. Um, you know, own, owning an oceanfront condo is very much like running a business. You have two CEOs in the same industry. One makes the business soar, the other simply makes the business tank. They're having two different experiences. Well, that is very much like owning an oceanfront condo. I've talked to owners that say that oceanfront condos, they, they didn't benefit anything from it and it wasn't good for them and they're selling their unit and they're, they're getting out of the game. And then I've interviewed other people like Matt Fries, for example, who has eight units and he's making fifteen to $30,000 per unit each in profit every single year. And he has for the last eight years. So I'm gonna read you a quick clip. We're gonna look at a quick clip from the book, Good to Great, one of my favorites, where it addresses how people that run businesses can have very different experiences. He says right here, he says, compare Bethlehem Steel to Nucor. Both companies operated in the steel industry and produced hard to differentiate products. Both companies faced the competitive challenge of cheap imported steel, yet executives at the two companies had completely different views of the same environment. Bethlehem Steel CEO summed up the company's problems in 1983 by blaming imports. Quote, our first, second, and third problems are imports, end quote. Ken Iverson and his crew at Nucor considered the same challenge from imports a blessing, a stroke of good fortune. Aren't we lucky? Still is heavy, and they have to ship it all the way across the ocean, giving us a huge advantage. Iverson saw the first, second, and third problems facing the American steel industry not to be imports, but management. He even went so far as to speak out publicly against government protection against imports, telling a stunned gathering of fellow executives in 1977 that the real problems facing the American steel industry lay in the fact that management had failed to keep pace with innovation. Guys, the whole point here is simply that we have one CEO in the steel industry at the same time as the other saying the biggest problem is imports. We have another CEO in the steel industry at the same time saying the biggest blessing is imports. They're both faced with the same reality. I feel like I see this with oceanfront condo owners. That's what's going on here. You have, you have an oceanfront condo owner that's not really engaged. They're not, you know, they, they want something that they can buy and use and they don't treat it like a business. They're not doing all the finishing touches. They're not updating the unit. They're not putting a telescope on the balcony and putting a nice sound, you know, a little music box on the counter so that when people walk in, they come into an ambient, inviting atmosphere. You know, they're not managing it and operating it very well. It might not be marketed very well because of their lackadaisical attitude. And they perform poorly. And they wonder why they're not in the top 5%. They honestly probably don't wonder because they're not really that into it. They're not really giving it excellence and they're not putting their heart into it. So, you know, they get into the business, they try it, they really don't make any money. And then they exit the, the business and they sell th that unit. And then you have other owners like Rufia at Oceanfront, excuse me, at Ocean Reef Resort, bringing in $207,000 in gross rental income on a, on a four bedroom oceanfront condo unit. There's, there's another efficiency I heard of that's bringing in $80,000, guys. And so the whole point here is don't buy into, when you see a lot of variance in the data, it very well could be due to the lack of an experienced owner running that unit. Ultimately, your oceanfront condo unit is going to be a reflection of your business acumen. It's gonna be a reflection of you and how well or how not well it performs on the market in large part is going to be up to you and the decisions and the choices that you make. If you're excellent and you put your heart into it, you learn all the top strategies, you learn how to beat the competition, that's what you want to do. You want to be in that top 5% of the rental market. So you need to study the people that are doing well, you need to plug into our channel, and you need to, you need to force your competition out. So that way you win, you bring in those high gross rental income dollars that ultimately translate into profits for you and your loved ones.
All right, to finish up on Sand Dunes Resort, I do want to point out that basically the Sand Dunes Resort, when compared to other resorts, might not perform as well as units at resorts with close grouping. In other words, close GRI grouping. So, you know, if you've got a resort, for example, our very next one, the Caribbean, you'll notice that the gross rental income numbers on all of those units are very close together. There's only a difference in the range of 10000 $998. So when you compare the difference there with the first oceanfront condo resort, you can see that there's a significant difference in the range. In other words, there's you could get a very low producing unit or have a low producing unit, or at least the historical data shows that if you invest at the Sand Dunes Resort when compared to investing at the Caribbean Resort. Now, moving right along, your average active price at the at the Caribbean is much higher. It's $436,583. Now, again, that range was $10,998, which is substantially less than the range at Sand Dunes Resort. I will throw out here real quick, guys, your average gross rental income was $61,889, which again was much higher than the Sand Dunes Resort. Um, close grouping of GRI, gives you a better chance of performing well, in my opinion. If the majority of units at the place, you know, have a close grouping of GRI, you can probably bet yourself that you're going to be in that fifty-five to $66,000 gross rental income range if all the units at that resort are producing and performing that well. Now, I will throw out that this is the second highest price out of all five oceanfront condo resorts. So, Keep in mind, you are going to pay a premium to be and run with the pack of units that are producing consistently well. Now, moving right along to Ocean Reef Resort, you'll notice that the average sold price is $315. That is our lowest sold price out of the five that I've chosen as, as some of my top picks. Um, you will notice that the range is very, very high. I think it's the highest range on the screen there. That's $33,914. In other words, there is the chance that things could go not well or perform poor for you by purchasing an oceanfront condo at the Ocean Reef, at least these two bedroom units. And uh, you know, you could you could be like the person that, that only brought in $27,756. Now, yes, they had two other units that were that were grouped close together and performed well, but it just goes to show you that, you know, that basically you can have units. You can have one owner that's bringing in $27,000 and you can have another owner that's bringing in $61,000 and they're at the same exact resort. And in my opinion, it's probably in large part due to the owners lacking the experience or having the excellence to really run their oceanfront condo well. Now, I do again want to point out that that is the cheapest price out of all five of these. If you're looking for a two bedroom oceanfront condo, if you're a first time investor, you should get, in my opinion, a two bedroom oceanfront condo. Then if budget is gonna be a constraint for you, then Ocean Reef might be an excellent choice for you. Now, moving right along to the Grand Atlantic, you'll notice, you'll notice that the average price here is $399.9. And if you look at the data, the range is very low. I think it's the lowest on our screen here of only $9,316. In other words, there's not a lot of variance compared to the other oceanfront condo units that, that, or excuse me, the oceanfront condo resorts that have a variance of over $30,000. So there's very close grouping here. You'll notice you're in, you're, you know, you're, you're at the low is 44,578, I believe it is. At the high, you're at $53,893. Now your average gross rental income came out to about $49,019. And I will say that, th that there is a close grouping of GRI, which means you, it, based on the historical data, there's a good chance that you might perform in that $44,000 to $53,000 range. Um, and then I will also throw out here that the price of this unit at $399,900, the average active price, is not, I believe it's overpriced, especially when you can come you know, right there to the Ocean Reef and buy one for $315,000 and you're, you're bringing in roughly the same amount of average gross rental income. So I do believe it is overpriced. I will tell you that with grouping, it also provides another insight in my opinion, 
It means that there are several owners at that oceanfront condo resort, especially if those units are performing well, that know what they're doing. So this lends into the power of association, guys. At an oceanfront condo resort with many owners, with many owners doing well, you need to get on social media. You need to go to the, the, the HOA meetings. You need to get in contact and get plugged in with those oceanfront condo owners. Find out what they're, they're doing and have them give feedback on your unit on what you can improve. You know, there is power in association. I have a client that, that purchased an oceanfront condo over at the, uh, the Meridian Plaza and he did just that. He got on social media. He looked for a group of owners there at the Meridian Plaza. He messaged people. He got in contact with people. He had conversations and he found out what he needed to do and how he needed to do it for that particular resort. So I do think that running with people that are doing well and getting feedback from them is going to give you an advantage as a first time oceanfront condo investor. Now, moving right along to Dunes Village. Now, Dunes Village is the one I could not wait to share with you guys. As you'll see here, Dunes Village has the highest average sold price of $473,100. Now, if you'll look at the gross rental income, your lowest gross rental income there is $69,500. Your next up was $86,207. And then finally, your highest gross rental income was $90,443, giving you an average gross rental income of $82,050. Guys, this place is on fire, in my opinion, compared to all of the ocean, all of the other oceanfront condo resorts. If price wasn't an issue and you could afford to, to, to spend a few extra dollars, then in my opinion, it would be smart to invest in Dunes Village resort now again it's it's got middle of the road variants but it does have the highest gri upside so yes you know you've got a twenty thousand dollar variance there you know the the worst that could happen based on the historical data is you know you bring in sixty nine thousand five hundred which is more than a lot of these other units a lot of these oceanfront condo units a lot of these other oceanfront condo resorts so in my opinion doesn't have a really bad downside. Now, I'll, I'll also throw out at the very bottom of the screen, guys, you are going to notice how I've compared all the different oceanfront condo resorts, their average gross rental income, and their price. So you can see that for $315,000 at the Ocean Reef, you're bringing in $48,686 average gross rental income. Again, that's based on the historical data. And then Grand Atlantic, next one up is $399. You're bringing in $49,019 average gross rental income. But what I really want to draw your attention to, and there is sand dunes on there for $338, and you know you're you're bringing in $50,180. But what I want to draw your attention to is the bottom two that are highlighted in green. The Caribbean is bringing in $61,899, and it's $436,583. And then on up, you have you have the Dunes Village as we have, as we've already talked about, bringing in eighty two fifty at four hundred and seventy three thousand one hundred dollars. Now, if you're under four hundred thousand dollars, then you're going to want to buy. If your budget is under four hundred thousand dollars, you're going to want to buy at the Ocean Reef. If your budget is above four hundred thousand dollars, you're going to want to buy at Dunes Village. You can pay an extra thirty six thousand five hundred seventeen dollars on the purchase price to get an extra $20,151 in gross rental income. I think in my opinion it's well worth that trade. Now you'll pay more for units at resorts that perform better. It's pretty clear based on the data except for our one unit at the Grand Atlantic that was a little overpriced. You will pay more for a unit that's going to perform better. The data plainly re reveals that. Now, I just want to throw out a quick caveat. We cannot ever guarantee what's going to happen in the future. So, you know, if you buy a unit, obviously it's advantageous to look at the historical data. At the same token, the historical data does not guarantee how future profits are going to roll out. It's not going to guarantee gross rental income. It does help us make an informed and savvy investment decision. And we can look over the course, you know, the past decade, the last five years, the last two years, and really see how things have, have, have panned out and look at trends and forecasts. 
but it is never a guarantee of future profits. All right, let's get in unit 803. Now you will notice really nice flooring as soon as you come in. Really nice colored paint on the walls, nice gray paint. Two full-size beds, a fan with a light in the room, which is a huge plus. There is a closet there, as well as bathroom access. Now across the hall, you have this second bedroom. Flat screen TV again, two nice big full-size beds. An owner's closet, excellent. You always want one of those, especially if you're self-managing in an actual closet to the left. Nice full-size bathroom, as you can see here. Aisle. Now you do have a washer and dryer stackable here in the closet, which is really, really cool. Very useful for off-season guests who are going to have longer stays. Granite countertops, as you can see, dishwasher, dual sink, microwave, stove, a refrigerator. This is basically a home away from home. Now immediately to the right, we do have the master, as you can see here. Flat screen. Beds, closet right there in the corner, and then access to your own private bathroom. Tub shower combo, as you can see. Now let's check out that. Oh, and did I forget to mention your own balcony access, which is huge. I can't wait to get up to that balcony, guys. There's your dining room. Flows effortless, effortlessly into the living room. Flat screen, as you can see and a massive balcony, huge balcony, as you can see, guys. Check that out. Looks like somebody's got some live music going on. But this is your moneymaker right here. People want this balcony. They want a big, spacious balcony. Takes you right into the master. So all in all guys, by looking at variants, it gives us a lot of important information. In this video, you found out some of my top picks. Those are the oceanfront condos that I would tell you to keep your eye on. Now again, all this is my opinion. Of course, I'm looking at the historical data and I'm studying all the information and I help investors just like you all the time. So my opinion is you need to watch those five resorts, particularly Dunes Village. I also want to throw out that I really would not discount Ocean Reef. If you have the money to purchase a four-bedroom oceanfront condo, then obviously, just like I mentioned, Rufia is making really great money out there at the Ocean Reef. So I wouldn't necessarily discount it. Now, I do want to also throw out real quick, guys, as a first-time investor, I always advise my clients to buy two-bedroom oceanfront condo units. And I do this because it's middle of the road, as far as it's not as you know large as a four bedroom unit it's not going to cost as much and on top of that it's going to bring in more gross rental income generally than a one bedroom unit almost double and it's going to have relatively the same expenses as a one bedroom so that's kind of your sweet spot as far as resellability goes it's going to have a better resellability based on the last 10 years data which i've pulled and i've shown in another video which at the end of this if you click the link you can watch it It'll show you how I've compared, uh, I took the last decade and pulled you know, a handful of years over several different um, oceanfront condo units and, and just tracked how the, you know, the average price that they sold at in order to better determine the resellability. So as an oceanfront, con excuse me, as a first time investor, I want you to be in a unit that has a great resellability track record. That way in case this is not for you, or you want to get out of it quickly because you're in a pinch and you need to liquidate, then you simply buy a two bedroom because they appreciated better than the one bedrooms and they didn't have any losses that I found over the past decade when I pulled the, the historical data. So two bedrooms are the way to go as a first time investor when you're first starting out. If you're interested in finding out more about that video, click on the screen now and watch it. And I'm telling you, it's insightful and it will, it will be helpful to you in your venture in finding the right oceanfront condo.